Great question. We are now going to take a look at blockchain education's role in the development of Web3. It's something that people talked a lot about, that education is really the starting point, the seed um, that everything sprouts from. Um, and so we're looking at how we can really put it at the heart of this technological trend. Moderating this panel is Helen High, Binance's Executive VP and Head of Binance Charity. So let's all welcome Helen and her panelists to the stage. Everyone, this session is about put blockchain education at the heart of Web3. I'm actually so honored to be here with our distinguished actually panelists. Let me introduce the first one, Peter, Deputy Dean of INSEAD, one of the best business schools in Europe and in the world. And also Chris, uh, the founder and professor actually of Essex. And we have also got Deep from UK, from Imperial College, heading up on blockchain. And last but not least, we all heard from CZ, the most fascinating in France, the collaboration between Binance and Simplon. And we've got actually Frederick, the founder of uh, Simplon with us today. Thank you. So let me start. You know, being professors sitting here talking about blockchain Web3, tell us what about your journey? How did you get into this industry? Why you are fascinated about blockchain and Web3? What do you see the future of this? Maybe I start with Peter. All right, thank, thank you, Helen. Um, so I, I come at it from two ways. One, I, I, I teach big online courses and other things at INSEAD. Again, to a general management business audience and trying to get them to understand technology. And then I'm also Dean of Innovation, tro trying to get my colleagues to take exciting new things seriously. But I just talk about it as a, a professor of strategy and tech, tech strategy. Um, so of course, over time, bit by bit, you start to get more students asking questions about this or more executives slowly starting to be interested. And then I guess you asked about my personal journey um, three things I think really caught my attention about blockchain, just as someone teaching about tech strategy. One is use cases, right? So just, it is so important in general to find the right use cases and not get distracted by the wrong ones. And as we know, blockchain is full of some great use cases, but tons of noise. Um, secondly, again, I'm taught, teaching a lot of traditional companies, Visa or Schneider Electric, and this timing issue, it used to be they were all panicked about being too late and, and being slow and we have to move fast. Whereas we know that in fact, they started to get too fast, they'd move too early, too many promises and then disappoint and the corporate would kill it and they would be asleep when it became a big thing. So clearly blockchain, a lot of the use cases you have to be patient. Um, and then the last one I'll just share, I think that excites me most is tech is all about two things, talent and scale. Um, it's just the, the level of, I almost, sometimes I almost feel like I'm talking to other professors when I talk to people in the industry, the creativity, the, 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 the deep thinking in, in blockchain is unlike many other parts of tech. Um, but the second thing was on scale, some things scale, but again, if you think about the timing, um, often the scale's not there yet, and I think people don't always understand that. So a little bit about my journey as a professor. That's amazing. How about you, Chris? Well. I, in 2018, we organized the OECD Blockchain Forum at the OECD, and we thought we, there would be like a little people, and it was a huge success. So I said, maybe there's something to do for the young generation. And I went to ESSEC Business School and said, I would like to uh, build the courses on blockchain. And they were interested by these technologies because uh, ESSEC Business School is always ahead of the game. So they trusted me to build a 30 hours course uh, on blockchain at the time in 2018. And I remember the economy uh, teacher said, well, I would have last, uh, it would have taken me 30 minutes. How can you do 30 hours? 
And, um, and my main focus, I was used by this at the OECD where I was teaching already, is to, as you said, is to, uh, of course, underline opportunities, but also be very conscious about the risk of this technology. So that's one of the pillars of my teaching, is to always be, uh, of course, underline uh, the, 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 ch the opportunities, but also be aware of the risk. And as you say, when we go into business cases, uh, use cases, to differentiate between great use cases and, well, less interesting, I mean, uh, uh, use cases. Mm. This is amazing. And I think there's the famous quote of saying, education is the passport of the future. Thinking about the student who listened to your class back in 2018, BTC price probably is only 5,000 US dollars. Even though we're talking about BTC price has been halved compared with a few months ago, still $20,000, right? So actually, there's a, a lot of important things when you actually have a good education, understand ahead of the curve, understand what is coming. So how about you, Deep? You know, in Imperial, one of the leading schools, tell us about when we think about Imperial, we're probably thinking about rocket science, right? But blockchain, tell us more about that. Yeah, thank you. So, so it's a pleasure to be here with you guys today. I mean, I, I think a li little bit on the personal journey side of it. For me, I, uh, you know, I go back to when I was a postdoc. I, I trained as a physicist. And um, back in those days, the internet was just kind of emerging. We were looking at how digital technologies might transform societies. We had no idea, really, that what was going to happen with social media and everything that's happened since over the last sort of 20 years or so. And during that time, part of the work I was doing was around uh, looking at the kind of statistical modeling of financial systems and how maths and science and technology plays a part in finance. And I was fascinated with how we might emulate and create a real digital analog of the financial systems that we see. This was like a problem that was around, you know, the double spending problem and all of this kind of stuff. Um, and so for me, the moment that we ended up seeing the emergence of blockchain, it starts unlocking a lot of the aspirations for not just what we might do with financial systems, but what we might do with the internet as a whole. Um, almost returning us to the fundamental kind of initial ideas of what the internet was supposed to be all, be all about. And so this is really a powerful technology for me. So I'm a, I'm a technologist and a scientist, and I come from it from that perspective. Uh, and I would say my colleagues at Imperial, um, you know, Imperial is a, is a science and technology dominated school um, with, a, with a great business school as well. And we're fascinated by how the science and technology can then translate to real world impacts um, in businesses and in societies and how we can change people's, um, I, I guess, the conditions of prosperity around the world. And really, that's the key for me as to why this is such an exciting space to be in at the moment. That's wonderful. Last but not least, Frederick Simplon. Uh, before Simplon, I was a geek from now 25 years, so I'm really curious about technology. I tried to deep dive on blockchain in 2018, and in Simplon, I say, we have to have a certification on blockchain to certificate some developers who are dedicated to blockchain. So we get this certification from the state, but we didn't uh, train um, no, so much people because there wasn't the traction there is now for blockchain developers. So now it's really like huge and increasing. And I have to say that I'm very honored because there is INSEAD, there is ESSEC, there is Imperial College and Simplon. You see? <laughs> Comparing Samplon to your school, you know, it's really like incredible. But it's very important that everyone has access to this kind of technology. And as Samplon is really focused on under, underserved, we really have to focus on democratizing, demystifying this technology. And this is the thing I'm more passionate with. The use cases are great, but non-profit use cases, empowering people use cases are really something that uh, make me get up in the morning. Yeah. Fantastic. My next round of question is about reality check of what's the future. The reason I'm asking that, because you are actually dealing with students. What they are most passionate about is very important. So I do want to share with you, you know, from the various leading institutions you are leading, you know, what you are hearing from the student, how do you see they can impact? Maybe one of the things also maybe start with Peter. The, another curiosity I've got with this is that today, if we look at all the leading financial institutions, 
I would say majority of the executives in Europe, they probably all actually graduated from INSEAD. They are product of INSEAD. And now, Peter is teaching blockchain to really innovate. Your student has been doing, has been actually the empire they have been building. What's your view and how do you see the new generation of the student? What's their passion? All right, so briefly, like, like the others, when we tried to get started in 2017, 2018, there were a few faculty that were interested, but it was really work. We, we wrote, you know, you start, you get them to write cases on Binance, which is exciting, or Beef Chain, which didn't go anywhere. Um, but bit by bit, it built up so that by 2001, 2021, like our most successful elective launch anywhere at time was crypto entrepreneurship. And again, one of the things I'm watching, is it coming down? Uh, not yet. I think, again, you remember business schools are counter cyclical. So when the market turns down, people step out and they, they come back. So we still have a lot of people interested in like our NFT projects on campus and, and those kind of things. On the financial services, again, I have a, a strong view, which is, again, the role of, of, of schools is to bring diverse people together, diverse perspectives. So for me, it's really important that we have people from the crypto, the DeFi space in debating, interacting with, with these senior executives as well, and, and we bring all that together. And, you know, as, as, as one often says, it's good to keep the cannibals in the family, um, and you, know, you might as well disrupt your own alumni. Amazing. How about you, Chris? When you are teaching all those courses since 2018, what's the trend you are seeing from the students so far? Yeah. Um, I think it's, you can compare to the internet in a way. Maybe in 1995, uh, people were interested in knowing about the technology, what is IP, it was very technological. And then after 20, 2000, uh, students were more interested in what are the businesses uh, running on internet, like Amazon and things like that. And for me in the Web3, I observed the same tendency. As at the beginning, people were very technical about what, that, what they were interested in, and now they want really to be inside business. And that's why it's a huge opportunity to work with Binance uh, in my course, uh, where Binance mentors students, as well as Simple mentors uh, students, to help them to be into the business. For example, to be very specific, uh, we have a business case called Binance Pay, and they are amazingly creative on bringing ideas on how to make Web3 accessible to everybody. So, yeah, that, that's, that's the way I see it, from something which is technological uh, to something which is very much more business-oriented. Uh, that's amazing. And Deep, I remember a few months ago when we were doing the session in Imperial, I asked the question, how many of you actually owns uh, a crypto coin? most of the students all raised their hand, which I was shocked. Because if you ask, the penetration of blockchain and crypto is so high in colleges. Why is that in Imperial? Why do you think the penetration is so yeah. high? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it relates to your question that you were asking with respect to the students. That was a room full of students. Yeah. And, and for me, the students are the place where, you know, students don't have to necessarily ask for permission to play with the technology. Uh, to, to investigate it, to create it. I mean, the comment around the internet in the early 90s, I was around that, you've reminded me of being a student now. And actually, I could just quietly get on and do stuff and play with things and invent things. Um, and then maybe through that process of investigation, something practical would come out of it. So I think a lot of people hold crypto and are involved just to be involved, just to know how the mechanics works and exactly how the system operates and to play around with it. So that's why you had so many hands raise up. And really, I think what we're seeing is the power of kind of um, inventiveness, if you like, bubbling up from the students, making faculty and making the university stand up and take notice of this stuff and engage with it. And that's very exciting for me because it also disrupts the way institutions like in, in universities structure themselves, where they think knowledge and intellect comes from. Um, and it should come from the students. I mean, they should be an equal partner in uh, developing the cutting edge. Fantastic. And how about you? Frederick. Our students are really different from the students we, <laughs> we can have here because they are unemployed people, they are coming from a very underserved background, they can be refugees or newcomers, disabled people, people who were doing other jobs and reskill uh, in IT. 
and uh, their financial background is really poor uh, for the, the, the most of the time. So uh, when you ask who has crypto <laughs> in, a, in a room, uh, no one raised their hand, or else very few. Because there is something that is really difficult for adoption in this, uh, in this time of social class. Um, so we have to, uh, to make the, the, the blockchain user more diverse. And this is the, the sense of the partnership we, we announced this morning, because the idea is to uh, uh, raise awareness, uh, not around only crypto, uh, but also Web3 and other use cases. It's really interesting. And we were in a, a workshop in uh, aulnay sous bois in Saint-Saint-Denis a few days ago uh, with uh, people who are know a very low level of qualification and uh, we made them code on Solidity and uh, create their own uh, blockchain test on Ethereum and it was really they were completely uh, amazed by the possibility they never heard about something other than Bitcoin and the, the empower, empowerment effect is really huge so we have to foster adoption to uh, really spread the love uh, of Web3 application all uh, they were aware of Bitcoin, but there is so much thing to discover and so much thing. And, and I, in this room, there are many men <laughs> and, and we have to open also to women and to a really uh, different background because you cannot make metaverse or crypto things without any competency. But there is nothing that will happen uh, good things if there are no diverse people if the, the, the Web3 application don't look like the population and the general public. So that's why we are going to spread the love of blockchain for SMEs, for unemployed people, and also some executives who are really not aware of anything, you know, like zero. This is truly the beauty, the diversity, the decentralized and the inclusion part of it. And then after all, I think the technology itself should create values to the society. A lot of our great innovations that actually started at the school, at the student level. Is there any use case you are personal passionate about or something you've already seen students you are doing, you like to share with this audience? Maybe something I start with Dave. I know you are very passionate about actually the bottom billion, you know, the inclusive part. Do you want to talk about some use case along those side? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, if you just look at financial services and financial inclusion around the world, we are we are we're not in a good shape actually if you really be very be very honest with it. We've not architected a system globally that empowers huge parts of the global population and it doesn't look like anything much was going to change until something like blockchain and web3 and all this sort of stuff has come along. So, there's a really serious reason for why um, or, or there's a really serious kind of um, pathway that you can see for causing a very positive disruption globally to something which is really bred in a lot of inequity. So for me, things like looking at things like the sustainable development goals as aspirations that we're trying to solve, technologies that can help us get towards solving those problems, this is, this is one of those areas where we can really get after that stuff. And we should be brave enough to say that and to then to go after it. And you know, I, I think the point you've made here on, inclus on inclusivity and inclusion is, is so important important because whilst the technology can help us to get to those really big aims, it's down to us what we choose to do. And actually the same technology can just multiply the current infrastructure and systems that we have. So we can choose to make it just as kind of um, uh, non-diverse and problematic as it is now and amplify it with this technology, or we can choose to use this technology to do something very different. And that's the human aspect that we have to get right in this whole, in this whole game. Fantastic. I guess maybe two things I didn't see. I'm um, again trying to, to broaden the impact. Again, uh, you know, the challenge of how you don't just reach out to elites is, is important. Uh, one thing we did, we did launch a big um, special, MOOC specialization with Don Tapscott. Again, trying to, to reach a, a wider audience. Um, the other thing we did is we have a big um, competition across business schools on product management. So you get all these aspiring product managers and business schools, we give them a challenge. This year's challenge, we just decided with the, the student organizers, would be NFTs for good. So again, I don't know what they'll come up with, but you, you give them these challenges, you give them support, and you see what, what young people across schools come up with, and you bring them together to present and debate. So we try and facilitate that kind of exchange. 
Yeah, and I think when companies come with a real, uh, re real um, will to, to, to go into impact, I had the chance to work with Frederic at Saint-Plon, so I've been used to think this way. And it's, it's a real pleasure to work yeah, with, with Binance, because there is Binance Charity, uh, which deals with uh, bringing scholarship to people who can't afford go to uh, to schools. And thanks to uh, the work we do with uh, James and Taylor here at, uh, at Binance, we have really something very tangible for the students to work with on impact, uh, on impact uh, cases. So I think that's, uh, that's a huge opportunity. That's amazing. Yeah, just to share a story, when we made this workshop at Onesuwa, most of the people were uh, coming from African or uh, North African origins. And when I started to explain, based on the Binance Academy uh, materials, that we can have a decentralized finance and something like this, they say, oh yes, we have something like this in Africa, it's called Tontine. And we can borrow and lend some, uh, some money, etc. We can do it on the blockchain now. It's like history and technology can bring something together at scale. So they were really, uh, really touching what can be done with the technology and, and it was something huge for them. So That's amazing. And I think technology, after all, it is still a tool. There should be a purpose of the technology is to create values for the society because people can use the tool to do something either good or evil. So this is why the school, the education is so powerful. I know Yin said there's a very clear call. Uh, business is a good uh, force, you know, for the society. So how do you actually, during your teaching of the technology, how you actually build into the value system to the student? Yeah, well, I, I clearly the conversation is shifting. I think, you know, in the past there was somehow this assumption that technology would be for good, and, and, and clearly when you look at some of the negative effects of social media, there's no excuse anymore when you're building the metaverse if you're not thinking it could go wrong. You're, you're, you're just not awake. And, and I, again, I think it's a bit pushing against an open door. I think we that's been so beat into us. Um, it's just around you know, getting the faculty the support, getting connecting them with the right cases. The students are pushing for it. Um, so, so, but again, we, we, I think the whole ecosystem has to, to, to really rise up and, and embrace this. Um, but, but I feel like um, I, on this one, I feel like I'm pushing against an open door and, and people have gotten the message. This is really amazing because I think from Binance perspective, we do believe technology should actually empower, it should become the best complementary of human nature. It should empower empathy, innovation, and stewardship. This is why actually with the partnership with all of you, we want to drive that inclusive, you know, collaboration to really empower everybody, you know, in SX and also Simplon at the same time. So how do you see, you know, Chris and also uh, Frederick, the People, the unprivileged people, when they have this kind of education support, how do you think they can really use the tool to change the future? Um, I think first, um, uh, students are interested by impact and they're also interested by the innovation that enables the technology. And that's a very powerful direction of, uh, I use in my teaching. Web3 will be of an, um, an opportunity to really enhance the marketing tools for companies. And it's not necessarily uh, an impact purpose, but it's also very interesting because it brings new tools. So it's, I think it's both, both directions that you need to pursue uh, during, the, during the course I do at, uh, at, uh, at ESSEC. Brilliant. Mm. I think Saint-Plan students want to make the world a better place, but they want to change their own destiny. They want to get a job. They want to be included in the society. So when we are providing some um, frame to get some new skills, they want to get job. They, they have ideas to be entrepreneurs. Uh, they were, you know, unemployed two or three months ago, and now they want to run business. You know, the, the gap is really incredible. After we 
showcase the use case, non-profit uh, impact, but really they are starving to survive, they want jobs, so I'm not sure that this kind of audience is um, uh, the best audience to, uh, to generate some social impact uh, entrepreneurs. I think that people more privileged, maybe in your schools, are better uh, social impact, but the social impact they want is for them, and it's a good thing, I think, to empower themselves. To build on that, I think there's also the education to policy makers and also regulators and also the politicians. And I think maybe deep, you can also share, you know, at Imperial, I know actually a lot of British politicians looking for policy advice papers from you. How would you also shape even from the top? Yeah, I mean, I think we're living in a we're living in a period of history where there's a lot of what you know we some people term sort of emerging disruptive technologies. This is one of those domains. Um, but we have also we're living at a time when I think it's become um, kind of standard for people in senior decision making circles, whether they're in industry or whether they're in government, to not feel it's necessary to understand the technology or the technical aspects too much and to abdicate responsibility for that to other people. You know, my my techie team or my techies, they'll give me the information that I need. And, and I think what's happening now is we're calling time on that kind of model. Um, so if you look at the regulatory space right now, technology is moving so fast. And if you look at regulatory time cycles, how long it takes to form regulation and legislation, by the time, you know, let alone the ink being dry, once you've started the document, the technology has already shifted away. So we need almost a paradigm shift in the way that we run regulation, maybe some sort of agile and sort of more sort of a nimble process for regulation. Um, but we also need to increase, I believe, the technical literacy of the people that we have in those, uh, in those systems so that they can make the right policy calls, the right regulation calls. And that, of course, means then creating education pathways for through life learning to allow people to come back from professional uh, from their professional domains and then learn back at a university and go back to the professional world. And that's that's something which the universities I know across the world are very, very yeah. much engaged in. That's what we're yeah, interested in too. Huge. Again, it's not the place we play the most, but it, again, when we look at the space and where the ecosystem is, we're, we're trying to step up to do more. I think there's a, a window here. I think national regulations are really feeling strong. And, re and then if you look at what's happened in crypto, they feel empowered. And the window to try and not get it too wrong is now, so um, there, there's a real call, I think, for everyone who cares about the ecosystem, how we navigate this moment. Actually, that's very important because I think for a lot, because a lot of policy makers and also executives, they graduated from the school actually you taught. If I'm in one of their shoes, I'm hearing this full more about crypto blockchain, my view is I want some neutral understanding what is it going to be. The First place, probably I would go back to the professor I trust, the per people who taught me all the knowledge, you know, in my system. So now I guess you guys are also getting these kind of questions. How actually, can you elaborate more? How actually do you respond when you have those kind of requests from policy makers and also executive? Um, again, I, um, again, you need to build dialogue. So again, you, you need, because again, academics bring a lot of perspective, but again, there's a lot of, other complementary knowledge, how do things work in practice? What, you know, um, uh, you, know I got, you might have very good macroeconomists who understand a lot about fixed exchange rates and why stable coins in certain ways are very bad, but still to get them with people from the Bank of England, from, from Goldman Sachs, and, and get that dialogue so you get real solutions takes effort. So I, 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 don't, I don't think that just by bringing an academic in isolation that that's enough. How about you, Chris? What's your view on this? Yeah, um, I think regulation is absolutely key uh, in, in the Web3 environment because um, uh, it protects uh, consumers and investors. And if we want to have a mass adoption of Web3, we really need to have education, certainly, but also not to forget that regulation is very important and even to be taught uh, during the, the, the class. Uh, regulation is key uh, in the Web3 industry. Mm. That's amazing. Before we wrap up this channel, I want actually each of the panelists maybe give one sentence you want actually the audience to take away. 
it's very clear, you know, for the whole Web3, there's a huge knowledge gap. Education is going to play a vital role, 360 degree, from policy makers, existing big conglomerate uh, business uh, decision makers, and also to the future, to the student, and also to the future generations, and also the inclusive part of, you know, across, you know, the, the globe. And you guys actually are shaping that. So what you want the audience to take away from each of you? All right, so my, again, put my hat on as a strategy, technology strategy professor. The value is gonna come from a lot, a lot of the technical, deep knowledge you have here, combining it with real business understanding. How do you build business models and get this to happen? And you've gotta build bridges. So you've gotta bring people with that industry experience in, with people who are excited and passionate about the technology, and you've got to meet in the middle if you're gonna create value. Amazing. Well, on the knowledge part, I would say that Web3 has to be connected with other digital technologies and not to be taken in a, isolately, you know, like, for example, artificial intelligence, big data, and other technologies. So that's on the knowledge part. Then on the business part, I think there's a lot of jobs today in the Web3 industry. A few uh, people still maybe sometimes believe if you work on blockchain, you'll be a, developers, a developer, for example. There are so many jobs, and I think Binance is a great illustration on how many different jobs you can have uh, in the Web3 industry. It could be legal, it can be marketing, it can be... Well, just take the comparison with Web2, with the internet where they were, they, it has revolutionized every job and it's becoming the case. And I can really see uh, with my current promotion how people from very different backgrounds have taken this course, w whether it's communication, it's legal, it's business, it's technological, because uh, once again, there are plenty of jobs in Web3 and that's what seems to be fascinating uh, uh, to my point of view. Very encouraging. Deep? Yeah, I'll, I'll just be brief. I think I'm just going to echo something that was said a minute ago. I think um, get yourself involved in places where you have people coming from different disciplines with a different perspective. We, we always talk about the university being a convening center, somewhere that industry, government, and academia, the so-called triple helix, can come together. But wherever you find that forum, I think get yourself in that room because it will give you a fresh perspective on your startup, on your research project, or whatever else you're doing in, in, in this space. Amazing. Frederick? Yeah, just to conclude, diversity is the key for adoption, but it's the key for resilience, it's the key for Im innovation. So really, we have to invest on diversity because it's the strong asset we have to make the Web3 thing that really is going to make the world a better place. That's amazing. Let me call something to close, which is Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon to change the world. And actually, it's a great honor for Binance to partner with uh, each of you, actually, to make a difference, you know, for the future, for us and also for the future generations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.